Hi everyone, this is Michelle with the Warrior Painters Podcast. In this episode, Kaylee and I interviewed visual development artist Lynn Chen, whose work often features adorable corgis. You'll learn how Lynn grew her huge online following thanks to inspiration from her own corgi, Mochi. Originally from China, Lynn talked about her early art education, move to the U.S. and career progressions that would lead to her first in-house studio job, or so she thought. At the time of our recording, Lynn was a couple weeks away from her baby's due date, so we dove into her thoughts and anticipations as a new parent in the animation industry. Hi, I'm Lynn. Um, I'm a visual development artist currently working at Warner Brothers. Before my um, animation job, I was actually working as a senior concept artist in video game. And so, yeah, I think I've been working in the industry for about over six years now. But anyway, during my free time, I do a lot of doodles. I love painting corgis and I have a corgi at home. Uh, Yeah, that's me. Cool. So how did you get into art? Oh my God. That's you can start back from childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all start somewhere from like drawing, doodling on the on the paper, right? So it's like at first it's a hobby and then you start going to some art classes and find it's very interesting and then it just keeps going, you know. I think going to art school it become natural to me because I kinda suck at school because I was in China and I want to get in the art college. There are a bunch of art tests you have to take. The good thing is like, if you take the art test and going down that path and the requirements for mathematics, like those kind of score, you don't have to score really high. As long as you pass the baseline, you'll be fine. So it's like, yeah, maybe I'll go for that. Actually, I was really lucky. I, I got an offer from a really good art school in Beijing, the Communication University of China. Um, they were actually known for their entertainment majors, and there are a lot of celebrities coming out from that college. I was majoring in animation, actually. Yeah, like I had friends, they didn't do really well in high school, so mm-hmm. they went to art school afterwards. I don't know if Michelle, you know that. So basically in Asia, if you're not doing good in school, you go to art school. Like, oh really? Kind of <laughs> it's so weird thinking that way, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah. I think I was kind of re- rebellion when I was in high school because there are two paths you could choose: whether you want to go for like mathematics, physics, and all that, like science or like literature kind of direction. And I think my English and Chinese are better. So my mom's like, oh, you should choose the literature. I was like, no, I'm going to go for science. And I was like, I was so (laughs) mad at it. All my teachers were chasing after me and said, oh, you need to take extra time, you know, come to school on the weekends. We'll spend more time so you actually get to pass the exam. So I was pretty miserable um, my senior year of high school. But I was really grateful, actually, um, when I know that option, you know, I could go to an art school, just try. And my parents were not that supportive, I guess, but they still say, okay, just you can spend like three hours each week going to the art studio and we'll see what you can do. Are they supportive now? I, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think they know exactly what I do. My mom just think I stay at home and I don't go to work, but I get paid for some reason. <laughs> as long as you bring in a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a real job. Yeah, I think my parents were very supportive when I when I was little. They sent me to art classes. They know it's very important to have a hobby, but I don't think they ever thought about sending me to an art school because you know it's not something sounds like oh you're gonna guarantee get a high payment job I remember the senior year high school I got the pass to go to the art studios every Saturday so I will bring back a sketch you know like like a portrait or something when you're practicing spend three hours in the art studio and I remember I was really proud I said I was making progress hey hey this is my painting today this is my drawing today I remember they were not interested at all they're just like okay go back to your room and uh, get your homework done wow that's not really strict 
it's it's tough. I think they definitely came around after、uh, my college because, like, after I got in college, I started doing freelance on the side, and I think slowly they realized, okay, actually, art is not just like the typical, you know. Um, struggling artists, you don't know like how you're gonna sell your painting like that. There's actually a lot more to it, like animation, video game. They really have a lot of opportunities out there in illust- illustrations as well. So I think, yeah, I think now they're definitely more supportive, knowing that I could get paid <laughs> and have a have a good、um, have a good income. I think that's that helps a lot. Well, maybe also you were really good too. Yeah, you, <laughs> of course. That's how you could get jobs, freelance and stuff. <laughs> freelancing is hard. I feel like, especially when we first started, freelancing is definitely tricky because you don't always have the steady income. But we all start somewhere, and I think as long as you keep going. So when you got started,、um, and when you went to art school, did you know you wanted to do animation? Because you you're, you said you studied animation, right? Yeah. And did you know like what what it was you wanted to do? I yes and no. I think when I was little, I know I want to be an animator, an artist, or something related. Because I love like Japanese cartoon, like animation TV shows. I think I'm. I do animation, but I had no idea what does that mean. So I went to college, majored in animation. I still didn't know what what was that about, you know? Because the college in China, I feel it's. I guess it's different because I didn't go to college in the states, so it's hard for me to compare it side by side. But we do have a lot of、um, other classes that I didn't expect I would take, like more advanced math. Yeah, programming. I, I'm not very good at that, and I didn't know like study animation. You have to learn math. Why? You and, do? I didn't have to study math. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I think it's just the Chinese college thing. I think there are a lot of time you are not actually doing art. There are definitely like fundamental art classes, but compared to the percentage of time you're spending in the college. It's actually not that much because you have all the other things going on. So for me, I I think I didn't know what I wanted to do for a long time, up until I came to the states, and I realized, oh, actually, you could do what you wanted to do, and if you make efforts, go into that direction, actually, you can see some result.、Uh, back in China, when I was in college, maybe I was too young, maybe I was just like. Busy freelancing, I wasn't thinking it through, but I think, yeah, eventually I figure it out. But I wish I knew that better. You know, hey, I want to be an artist, not an animator exactly, but maybe like visual development, concepting. I didn't know that was a thing, so yeah, that was interesting, I guess. So, so did you choose that major because that was the best one in that university, or did you choose it because you thought you're gonna do animation? I think I thought I was gonna do animation, and also, it's it sounds like a very good、um, major at that time. It it was still good. I think I learned a lot, like basic animating fundamentals. That definitely helps. I think whatever we learned from the past、um, along the way, it all adds up to to help you to get to where you are right now. I feel like. Even now, I'm doing concept art right now or visual development. My understanding of animation a lot of times it still helps me a lot, like understanding how the camera movement might be and how to position the character and how to make the exaggerate the forms and make it more natural when it moves around. I think I think that helps. Yeah. Did you learn all those too, Michelle? Like all those technical things about animation? Um. Yeah, because I I also studied animation, but I was really bad at it. <laughs> yeah, like, you're right. Because like I I discovered like wow, anim- animating is a lot of work. It、um, is so many so many drawings for like one second of animation. But yeah, but I I think I I totally agree with what Lynn's saying. It all it helps you become because you understand how to how animation works and it makes you a better artist, a better designer. So I'm, I'm glad that I had that foundation, and I'm sure you did too, Lynn. The part of me was like, "Am I too lazy? That's why I don't want to be an animator." Because 
This is so much work. It's definitely a labor of love. But what's funny is like, um, because I came to the States for MFA degree, I actually, at that time, I was studying illustration, but my thesis actually went back to animation because that's what I know how to do it. And I made an animated, uh, like a picture book. So I was painting each frame, like, over and over again. It's like, why am I doing this to my, myself? I thought I'm, I was over animation. I, I don't know. I feel like what you're passionate about always comes around. And then when you get that final end product, right, your final animation, it's so satisfying, like all it that is. hard work and it's true what you can make. You know, I bet she impressed everyone in her school because everyone else was just doing illustration and she turned in an animation and yeah. made it project. It's, yeah. it's pretty fun, Yeah. So where did you go to you? So after you mm-hmm. were freelancing for a little bit in China, right? And then you moved to the U.S. for um, your MFA? Yeah. So I was actually working at the outsource studio full time in China after graduating from college. So it's like college and two years of like uh, working outsource studio. And I got really bored of it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm out here. And that, that's when I decided to come to the States for MFA degree in illustration. Yeah, yeah. I think after graduating from my MFA program, uh, that's when I started freelancing a little bit. Which school did you go to? Maryland Institution College of Arts. That's in Baltimore. When I got in the program, it was actually a very new program. I think we're the second year. I didn't know what to expect because um, I was more used to, you know, like when you study in China, like the teacher feeds you, you know, like, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that. But there, it's very different. It's just like you have to get the resource you will need in order to accomplish what you want to do. And that's something I wasn't used to. I think that's a big learning curve to learn how to learn. I think the biggest takeaway for me in my graduate school is like actually knowing, figure out what I wanted to do and choose the classes I wanted to take and really be responsible for it, for for any decisions that I make. I think before my grad school, I didn't even know what concept art is, what visual development is. And I didn't know, oh, that's a direction you actually could go and take it as a career, I think. That was really eye-opening for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important to learn how to learn, which I think that's probably what happens a lot in graduate programs because you're a bit more independent Mm -hmm. um, after you've had like your foundations or or whatever your previous experience was. So that's probably why um, you had that more independent experience and taking charge of your education. Yeah, but that's really hard. I came here for grad school too. I think I spent the first six months just to get to know the language. Otherwise, I don't even know what the teacher was saying. Oh my God, it it is really (laughs) hard. It is really hard. I feel like as an international student, you know, there's a, there is a lot of pressure being in the class, especially you're not used to the like more interactive, like critique kind of environment, you know, it's, it's a culture shock. It definitely takes some time to get used to. I remember a couple of times, you know, like I want to say something in the class. I was so nervous. I was just like battling inside. You know, okay, okay, I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to say this. But no, this is too scary. And my, my, my face are like turning red. It was just like all silent sitting in the corner. I really want to say something. But in the end, I didn't say anything. That feeling is so weird. <laughs> But yeah, I think eventually you get used to it. I think it definitely helps to speak up a little bit more, like talking to your classmates more, have more communication. I don't know. Yeah, it's a big learning curve. It's not easy. Would you say that's a difference? And, and maybe Kaylee can also ex- mm-hmm. expand on that difference between like the education in, in China versus education in the US, like you having to speak up more or be more independent and stuff. Yeah, you definitely need to share your ideas more, uh, even in class. I think in China, it's like the teacher just come here to give you a lecture and then they leave, you do your homework. And if you have questions, you ask them maybe for the next class. I think in the U.S., it's like, like, like Ling was saying, it's like a very different situation. It's like a blank canvas. They just give you something. Like sometimes they come in with the title of the class and then be like, what do you think this means? 
<laughs> and, and, and then yeah. you have to engage otherwise you otherwise you don't get good scores because because <laughs> in-class participation counts right yeah. so that's a lot of pressure but I don't know about art school like do you think there are some very different things about when you're te- learning art from the art teachers they would do something that's really new to you um I think critique was very new for me because like you were saying the classes in China teacher just give you a, like give you a lecture and then you do your homework that was it but um in art you actually start critiquing each other's painting that was so frightening to me at first because I don't know how to do that I don't know how how to construct my sentence even and I didn't know how to be constructive to get positive feedback I don't know it's just like yeah I, I think it helped a lot because all the classmates, in, um, they're, they're super friendly and they also understand, okay, this is a little bit difficult for you, but they really um, pay attention and listen. And sometimes they help me finish my sentence too. <laughs> it's like, thank you guys. I think that's very different. Um, it really helps you to think critically in a way. That's what I didn't learn in China at all. So really think about how you can improve your artwork and how you can help each other to improve. I think that's very, very new to me compared to the experience learning in China. So you were less comfortable giving critiques comparing um, to receive critiques? Yeah, I'm good at re- receiving critiques. <laughs> giving critiques <laughs> is much harder. Because <laughs> I feel everyone is so good. They know what they're doing. Well, what can I say, you know? How can I be more helpful? But I think in a way, it's like give and take. You, know? you cannot just only take critiques from others. Yeah. You feel like you're better at it now, giving critiques? I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Kaylee's great at it. <laughs> Kaylee's always giving critiques. <laughs> I, I'm learning too. I'm trying to be less direct. <laughs> direct is good. No, that's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 I admire that about you. That's what we need. Yeah. No, no, no. That's because I don't paint or draw, so I'm okay. I can, I can be so direct. But if I do it, I'm going to get scared. <laughs> it's good because you have fresh eye on things. You know, you have a different perspective view and you could just point it out. Because I feel like a lot of times, like I work with producers or directors and some of them are not artists, but I feel very, it's, it's really nice to have someone who doesn't necessarily know art as an artist but no like they keep pointing out okay this doesn't feel right but you can really think about oh why is it not right because they're not artists they're not gonna try to fix the problem for you that but that really encourages you to to really think about what's not working and try to trying to improve on that i'm gonna make angela listen to this part <laughs> she's like you can't just tell me this doesn't work. You have to tell me how I can improve. I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> you know, I say that. Director. <laughs> you know, I say yeah. that, but sometimes it's really hard. Like sometimes my husband will say, oh, this part, it could be better. I was like, why didn't you tell me earlier? Now the, <laughs> now the painting is finished. Now what am I supposed to do? Tear it up and, and redo it. And I get really mad. That's me. Yeah, I got my own problems. <laughs> No, that that's a really good point. And also a lot of what we do isn't seen by other artists. Like we make a, a movie mm-hmm. or a show. Mm-hmm. Most people watch it. We're such a small part of like the world as artists in animation. Like most yeah. of what we see, and like they, they won't like care about like all the perspective or, or like <laughs> any little art details that really get at us as mm-hmm. artists, right? <laughs> yeah, no, because I feel that's a hard thing because I worked as a art lead slash art director for a while in the game company I was working at. It's really hard to know what's good enough, I feel sometimes. As an artist, you always have a higher standards in your heart. You feel like, oh, this could be better, that could be better. But in the production pipeline, you know, like you only have so much time. You cannot spend a month or two just like experimenting, especially for a social game that had like super short turnaround times. And you just get pushed and say, okay, just just get it good enough. Just keep going. I think that's really hard just to say, okay, this is good enough. Let's let's move on. Yeah, that's really important. You really have to balance all the like, time and, and then the other yeah. effort for getting things right. Yeah. So did you start in games like right after you finished your MFA? 
Yeah, actually, um, after my MFA, I'm mostly in games. I started as a freelancer. I think was within the first year of my graduation, I got an offer from this Chinese game company called OnePlus. I don't know how they found me online. I think somewhere. I don't know, but I feel really lucky. The headquarter of OnePlus uh, is in Beijing, and I was. Um, in Baltimore still, so I was working remotely online.、Um, I've been working remotely since then, actually. What did you do with some concept art?、Uh, started as a concept artist,、um, but basically on the game project, you do a lot of different things. So I do character designs, I do background paintings, I do like sometimes painting the panels, because like game have like. Pop up panels.、Uh, it's actually really fun. I I I get really into it because、um, you know it's an ongoing social game. So it's like a lot of themes are seasonal. So a lot of like pop up game panels. It could be like Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And I was new to the states. And every time when I do research, it was actually really fun going on Pinterest, seeing all the like super. Nice image about like seasonal stuff and trying to think about how to incorporate those fun elements and new ideas into my painting and make the game looks fun. Yeah, I liked working painting those little panels a lot, and I think just by working and painting every day, I actually learned a lot from the job. How long were you working in,、um, in games? Because eventually you went into animation, right? Mm-hmm. So I think I was with them for about four years, almost five years before I make the jump. But during this four year, four or five years, I was freelancing in animation on the side.、Oh, okay.、Um, yeah. So it's a little bit both. So do you enjoy? Because you started off freelancing.、Mm-hmm. Um, did you enjoy getting to freelance and like work from home all this time? I do actually. I feel it's more. Efficient in a way because you don't have to commute and like communicating with clients is all online. I think I get pretty used to it, but there is downside. Working from home for four years, I feel I feel like I'm losing my mind. I start talking to my dog way more often, <laughs> and when I go to grocery stores, I get super excited and talking to the cashier for like fifteen minutes. It's like this is not right. I think I need some human connection. I think that's part of the reason why I think, yeah. Since we're right now we're in LA, and Jeremy always say, "Yeah, we're in LA. We probably won't live here forever. And maybe it's a good time for you to get in a studio, actually, like working house for a little bit." It's like, yeah, that's right. So also, I think it's really cool when, you know, when you're in games for four years, and I think the game industry and animation industry have a. It's similar, but I mean, as a as a concept, as an artist, it's, there are definitely similarities in both of the fields. But I feel a lot of animation artists work differently. They have a different approach to things. I feel that sometimes that's very interesting. I'm just curious. I think want, I want to learn new things, learn new、um, approach to new approach to solve problems. I guess I think that's also part of the reason why I wanted to make the jump. Just to see the other side. <laughs> yeah, and how many days you got to work in the studio <laughs> before the pandemic? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's fun! Yeah, that was crazy. I started in March first, March second, and then I was in studio for a week and three days, a week and three days, and back at home. <laughs> <laughs> When I started, I was so excited. I was like, hey guys, I'm so excited! You know, I finally get to work in house. You know, and that that was it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know it'll be such a long time. I thought we、we'll、probably work from home for like two, three months. That's it. But then, yeah, and we're back at home now. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. So let's hope the pandemic ends soon, so Lin can go back to enjoying the studio <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, finally getting so your very first in studio job. There's a global pandemic.、So、no, maybe it's not meant to be. <laughs> oh I, I, I was joking, you know, because I decided to go in house. That's why the whole pandemic happened, just to、yes. get myself out. <laughs>
everyone's in a different situation in the pandemic. How do you think you are uh, adapting to it right now for your work schedule? Are you super used to it because you work you work from home like for I a long think, time? Yeah, it's a good question. I think I'm yeah definitely I'm very used to it just because like I have my work station set up. I have everything that I need. Um, so it's a very smooth transition because I've been working from home for a long time. I think it's just a couple like technique setup because you're working with a new studio. They have their own setup. Once that that's over and I think it's pretty easy. I think in general, the animation and game industry, we are all very good at working remotely. But, but you did jump from like jump to another industry. Did mm-hmm. you face any challenges? Like, especially you cannot talk to the team directly? Um, not much. Yeah, but definitely there are challenges because I think in, just in general, getting, getting a new job, there will be challenge, especially right now the pipeline. Because like when I was working in games, um, I, I was with, with them for a long time. I know exactly how things work and I know what exactly what I need to do. But um, when I get into the new project, there's actually a certain pipeline. Mm-hmm. I didn't ex- Well, I did expect, I think, because there are a lot of 3D in, involved. So I mentioned I was working full-time in China before I came here. Um, that was actually an outdoor studio. Uh, I was working in 3D for two years. So actually coming to this new job, they require, okay, do you know Maya? And can you work in 3D? I was like, yeah, I could. Although like I probably forget like 80%, 90% of it. But I was like, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, you say you can and then you figure it out later. (laughs) Yeah, totally. You can, you can. Yeah, yeah, you worked on it before. (laughs) You just need to get familiar. Yeah, 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 it's definitely, it took me a little bit to get back into it and say, oh, how my art works. Because I feel like all the software, it updates so often and they develop so much. It's like, if you're away for a year or two, it's like a new software to you. So I think um, at the new job, definitely that was a challenge just to see, okay, how are the other artists using 3D and turn it into a painting? Like, I think it's great because all my coworkers are super friendly. Whenever you have some problems or questions, although we're working remotely, they will give you a call just to explain everything to you and show you how to do that. I think I was really lucky to have co-workers like that. I, so I think I learned a lot in that way. Yeah. Mm. So even though you're working remotely, you're still able to interact and, and get to know your co-workers a little bit. I know it's, it's harder to do versus being in the yeah. studio. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was able to do that. But I feel like if we're still in a studio, I think it'll be it'll be easier, right? Because like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes because people are working, I don't want to bother them online yeah. all the time. So I get a little bit shy, but I feel, I, I would guess if we're in the studio, like everyone's together, chit chat, it'll be much easier to to start the conversation or, I don't know. Be more yeah, shit it's, it's, it's more organic versus yeah. you sending the message, hey, yeah, <laughs> bump into somebody. It's easier to have small talks to get to know each other, especially for yeah. a job. Yeah. Yeah. So I also wanted to ask, like, when, when did you start doing all your corgi um, artwork? <laughs> Yay, this is the focus of this corgi. podcast. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is what I really want to know. <laughs> I think I started, well, like, early 2018, probably a couple of years ago. Or end of 17, I forgot. I was working with Fun Plus as an artist for a long time, right? Um, as I mentioned, I was drawing like some game panels every day. I was super passionate about it. And I had much fun. But after two or three years, after you paint like Christmas three times, and the theme starts repeating itself. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't do this anymore. I think at that time, what I realized it was hurting me a lot uh, because I put so much time in work. I didn't do any personal work or very rarely I did personal work. 
So um, after working with Funplus after three, two, three years, I realized I couldn't, I couldn't draw anything for myself. Whenever I tried to draw anything, it looks like shit. It's like, oh my god, I can't do this. I forgot how to paint. I forgot how to draw. And I was looking at a lot like different artists as reference. You know, the artwork that I would love to draw, but I couldn't do that. I got super frustrated and get really sad. And depressed. It was like, oh my god, this is a black hole. This is no, this is not working. So I started talking with my、uh, one of my good friends just about that. So I, I was like complaining, saying,、like, you know, I can't do it anymore. You know, I lost it. She was like, don't you love drawing dogs? You know, you could just keep doodling. It doesn't have to be anything special. It's like, yeah, I can, I can draw corgi. I guess, yeah, sure. So yeah, I, I started doing a little bit. More doodling on the side, just corgis. Nothing, nothing particular, but it's mostly dogs related. And no, then, but but why corgis? Because there are so、cute. many other dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they get cute, but I think back then, I 2017. Oh, actually, yeah, we got we got mochi already. Oh, so、yeah. you started to draw corgis after you got your own I, corgi. Yeah, I think so.、Okay. That was after I got mochi.、Uh, yeah, mochi, mochi is my dog. <laughs> I think it was 2017 or maybe 18.、Uh, you know they have the Instagram online like drawing challenge, like Mermaid or Inktober and all that. That year I was like, yeah, I'll try Mermaid just just to get things going and see if it works. So I was supposed to draw mer Mermaid, right, or paint Mermaid. But I, on the third day, of course, I can't keep like focus on the theme. It becomes a corgi and. Some fish combined together, some weird creature. And I was like, I don't know that if that counts, but it was actually kind of fun. So I just keep doing that for a little bit.、Um, I think this kind of challenge, although I didn't stick with the theme because I'm really bad at it, but it does help me a lot to get the momentum going. Just draw and paint every day a little bit. That time, I think. Every day in the morning, I will walk my dog and start thinking, "Oh, what I can draw today?、Um, maybe just you know some other dog fish combined creature. I've done corgi already. Maybe I could do a husky or maybe other creature. And and just I think that really helps me to be more to practice,、um, think about more ideas, to be more creative. Because you are drawing every day, you feel less precious about your painting. It's like even if I skirt up today, I still have tomorrow. So it doesn't matter. You just move on. So I think that's where I started. Yeah, didn't start with corgi right away, but it's actually mermaid. <laughs> Mer mermaid but, corgi. <laughs> yeah. Cor cor corgi may. Cormac, Cormac. <laughs> <Cormen. laughs> What was that?、Uh, was that when your Instagram started to get popular too, through that、um, challenge? I think a little bit after that. I think it really helps when you start posting every day. You get to study、um, growth of followers. Yeah, I would suggest everyone if you have the time, definitely do some sort of challenges. Just. Paint or draw every day. You don't have to spend too much time on it. Maybe just one or two hours if you can. Just forget about client's work. Forget about schoolwork. Just draw and paint something for yourself. Because as an artist, it's actually hard. Because drawing and painting, it's your it's your hobby, right? And now it's a job. Sometimes you don't get to enjoy that. But I think we all come from. Same place where you started doodling in class and get yelled by teacher, but that, but that was kind of fun, right? So I think it's important for us to get that feeling back, you know, just just doodling for yourself, not for anyone. It do, you don't have to post it, you don't have to, you know, feel precious about it. It's just you connecting with yourself and knowing what you like to draw and knowing what you like to paint and keep keep it going. I think it's kind of. Recharging yourself after doing a lot of work for clients, drawing for other people. I think it's important to have that. Yeah, you have you Inktober or Corgitober? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, but I was so terrible at it. <laughs>、uh, yeah, I've tried Inktober, but I'm like ink. Ink is not really my thing, so I was finding it harder to 
to keep up. I always try challenges like for, for, for three or five days. It's like, yeah, I can do that five days. After five days, I'm like, no, I, I just start like sidetracked and start drawing other things. So, yeah, but you all no, but, start somewhere. <laughs> but but this October, you have an excuse because your newborn is coming. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Maybe I'll start Inktober and drawing babies. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Uh, Jeremy's going to change all the diapers. So. <laughs> yeah, that's his job. Yeah. And, and breastfeed. Oh, that's his job, too. <laughs> that's, I, I, my job is deliver the baby, and the rest is his job. <laughs> <laughs> it's my dream. Um, speaking of, of Jeremy, who yeah. is your husband... Um, and he's also an artist. Um, has being with an artist influenced like the kind of work that you do? I don't know if you guys ever collaborate on anything together, or maybe there's just nice things about being with an artist that being with a non-artist you, you don't get. Right. I feel really lucky to have him with me because he literally opened my eyes. You know, I, before I met him, I didn't know what concept art is. I didn't know, like, you could work in the industry as a concept artist, as a visual development artist before I met him. And also, I learned so much about, like, color theory and the lighting, how light works from him. Um, when we first started dating, it was actually really funny. Uh, back then, I think it was one day we were just chilling outside and having lunch together. And he was saying something like, oh, today the, you know, the weather is so good. And uh, look at the shadows are so blue. I was like, what are you talking about? The shadows are so blue, you know, is this are you crazy or something? I don't see blue. I, I don't know. This, this guy is, uh, this dude is strange. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, like back then, I didn't know how, how, how color works, how lighting works. You know, he was talking about the shadow, the shadow color get affected by the sky color, you know, because it's such yeah. a blue sky. I was like, it took me years to realize, oh my God, yeah, it is blue. And when the moment when I when I realized, oh my god, the, the the shadows are blue, like I was like, yeah, I think I need to thank him for that. <laughs> it <laughs> took me years to realize that. When I met him, I saw him painting. I feel he just have the lighting system in his mind. It's like he's painting an image, but he thinks lighting three dimensionally. He's like a lighting system in his brain. I think. That inspires me a lot. I just watch him paint and draw. So if we collaborated at, at all, we did try once, but I'm horrible, you know, because he will start a painting and give it to me. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'll keep doing that. I just put it on the side. I never finish it. So I feel really bad about it. We were talking, we should do some collaborating again. Um, Maybe you guys can try the other way. You can give him your painting and then he can work on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think last time we were trying, I was trying to paint the same image. But I realized like over the years, we do have our own strength. I think it makes more sense for him to do the background paintings, like epic environment. I just do a like a little quirky and put in there. I think in that way, I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> Yay! Can't wait to see that. <laughs> yeah, that would be super cute. And then um, you can add a baby to the corgi now. That's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, corgi maybe do some baby art. I don't know. <laughs> or corgi riding the baby. That'd be interesting. Corgi should be uh, teaching the baby how to act, react, and act. Mm -hmm. I think because <laughs> the You're corgi like, is older. <laughs> it's true. He's a big brother, right? And mm -hmm. I was thinking, yeah, after the baby is here, you know, we don't have nanny or anything. It's just two of us. Maybe Mochi, maybe maybe he could be a big brother, just babysit for us, you know, so we could keep working. Hey, we feed him. He needs to do some work, right? He needs to get his stuff together and just be a grown-up corgi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cute. Can't wait to see those drawings. <laughs> uh, I think I, I think that'd be good. Mm. We'll see, I'll send pictures. Oh, yeah. You must. They're not tearing the whole apartment apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're, you're very close to soon 
having a very exciting moment in your life, which we've already alluded to a lot, which is you're going to be a mother soon. Yes. Uh, very, very soon, which is really, really exciting. And, um, and also scary. And scary. Yeah. So, so I wanted to ask you about that. Like, what, what kind of thoughts are you having? Are you nervous? Are you scared? Um, and then in, in regards mm-hmm. to like in the animation industry, are there, do you feel like there are challenges like mothers or parents may face um, from working in our industry, which is, which is very like tough and, and challenging industry in itself. Yeah, I do. Oh, that's such a good question. Cause like for me, I didn't really think about it up until like lately I realized, okay, you do need to take maternity leave and what, what are you going to do after the leave? Do you go back to work right away or do you do like freelance work or do you quit the job just focus more on your family i feel it's really hard for me to answer the question right now because i'm still figuring it out i wish i have a clear answer in my mind already but i think that really depends on what you think it's more important like if the family is more important definitely i would spend more time with the baby especially when he's very young like the first year is so crucial you can always get more jobs somewhere but if you missed your kids first year that's just gone you know i feel that's a very tough decision to make what you want to focus on so i don't know when i first know i was pregnant i was actually in a panicking mode because okay to be honest i didn't I'm not good at planning my life, right? And when this is happening, I actually had the whole year planned out. I'm going to do a workshop in Australia and later in the year, a workshop in Mexico and I have light box and have all the talks and I'm starting a new job and I'm pregnant. Oh shit, (laughs) what do I do? Like... Honestly, that was my first reaction. And then I feel so bad because, you know, I feel like if you have your baby, it's kind of your fate, you know, like everything starts shifting around, like the focus of your life starts changing. Um, I think it's very natural and I feel very blessed in a way because now I start thinking more about like health, how to take care of ourselves, how to... Um, be more responsible not just like working all day every day and no resting not eating good and I think it's important to look back at your life and say okay what's important health is important and spending time with family is important so um, this whole year I think my 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 focus started to change a little bit and right now I feel like yeah when the baby is here definitely It'll be hard because I feel as a woman working in the industry, it's, I don't know how to put it, but it's just like, yeah, there are sacrifices you have to make career-wise. Although we're trying to be more equal with men right now, like we all have equal opportunity to, to get the jobs you want to to work as as hard as you could. But when family is involved, you just... I don't know. I still feel like unfair in a way, I would say, because as a mom, as a mother, I think you will take a lot more time to take care of your baby. And I don't know. I just feel it's going to be hard, but I also know it's going to be fine because things always work out. I don't know. I feel, I feel, yeah, I think that's a very, very tough question to answer for now, but I hope I'll find a, find a way to get this through. Yeah. I don't know. No, but, but think about this. You thought you had the whole year planned out for 2020 mm-hmm. and then you thought had you, you got pregnant. It, it was going to stop you from attending all the workshops <laughs> and uh, the light box, but, uh, but it, ha- it just so that. happened. Everything canceled. So. I know. I <laughs> I think in a way, I, I guess that's, I think we're lucky because I get to still attend Lightbox, but it's online. It's actually better. 
I I knew for sure I still want to do light box even even when I'm like nine months pregnant. I was like, yeah, I could totally do that. No, no worries. You know, I just have a table there. I could just sit there. It's gonna be easy. But now I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I, it's nice to stay at home, have a have a recorded video, and it's definitely much safer. Yeah, it's it's easier. I'm I'm glad actually. Like internet make everything possible. Definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. works out. So, so I guess it matches what you just said. Everything works out in the end. And I, I think like you being pregnant at this time is worked out really well for you as well.、Mm-hmm. I think so because like I'm thinking about like after deliver the baby, like what do we do with my work? Do I want keep working? Do I not want to keep working? I don't know. But like the good thing is we're all working from home right now. I think it's more manageable for us to just say, okay, I could I, I could start working a little bit in a way. We could take turns taking taking care of the baby. I think yeah, in a way, I think it's it's nice to have the option because I think、That's、it'll、nice. be really hard if you have to go back to work and commute every day. Yeah, it depends on what you think. I know some of my friends just totally quit their job. After they're having baby and just being a stay-at-home mom, and they're really happy about that. I think if that's the case, I'm happy for them too. But I think for me, I would definitely love to still be、um, active as a painter, as an artist, and do more things I love to do. I don't think things will stop. Maybe at a slower pace. But I th- I do believe if you're passionate about something, I don't think kids or have Having the kids, having a family, would stop you from doing that. It's just probably at a different schedule and at a different pace. But things still move forward, and the joy of having a new member in the family, I think that that would be everything. That's the best part. Yeah, and we talked about how you can just paint your baby with the most of your crazy. That will be best friend forever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping,、um, and I think things will change now from COVID. Now that studios see how working from home is, it's totally、mm-hmm. doable and stuff. So maybe there will definitely be more flexibility f- for working parents. You know, like gotta, I can work from home with my kid and don't need to go into the studio. So that、yeah. might change for you and then and everyone else too. Yeah. Well, I, I heard the opposite. <laughs> You did. I heard, I heard something <laughs> opposite. They were like, "Can I just go back to the studio? I don't want to spend the whole day with that kid." <laughs> that's true. That might happen too. <laughs> yeah, I think that、yeah. depends on like how old the kid is. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about、um, Lightbox, and you were really excited to do that for、mm-hmm. this year. And it, and I think you've been doing conventions and stuff for a while.、Right? Yeah. 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 Um, is that like a, a big part of what you do as an artist, like going or was going to、mm-hmm. conventions and selling your work? And how was your experience doing Lightbox this year, which was all virtual? <laughs> It's I, I, I really liked it. I really liked the、um, uh, the online version this year because、uh, during the Lightbox weekend, I literally so. Feel so overwhelmed because there's so many panels I could watch. I found myself opening three different channels at the same time, and my mind just went crazy. It's like, no, I can't do this. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. But it's really nice because, like, I think Lightbox really did a good thing.、Um, they really pushed the boundary of how like an online experience could be. You know.、Um, There are so many resources, and people could attend the、uh, the events all over the world. I think, in a way, it's nice to have more audience about,、uh, to be able to attend the event、um, without thinking about traveling and all that. But of course, there are things you cannot like replace, like talking with your friends face to face. I do, I do miss that part a lot. I I think the thing about Being at the table and people come to you, yeah, there are, there are fans,、uh, there are followers.、Uh, my followers will come to my table and say hi. I feel really, really happy meet meet them in person. But also, you meet a lot of people who you don't know. Maybe they didn't know your work, but then get to know each other a little bit. And also, meeting friends you haven't seen for a long time. That's really nice. Being online, definitely, I feel. That part is missing, but I guess it's 
it's nice you can still talk with your audience um, through Facebook, uh, through Instagram, or maybe Discord. I was doing a drawing session, um, the Macman Drawing Jam on Discord. Like there are other artists drawing in, and there's one girl from India. She was so surprised she could just directly talk with us. I find that's really cute, and yeah, like I know how she, how excited she was, and that makes me feel really excited too. So I think that's a that's a really good experience. Yeah, it gives you more direct way to interact with your fans and other other people around the world. Yeah, Discord and all these online things. It's great. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like next year, I don't know if they're gonna do only in Pasadena or online or both. Okay, no one knows what's gonna happen next year yet. <laughs> so we'll see. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Either way, I think it'll be great. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about your future and how you're not sure, but do you have any thoughts on, I'm going to ask you anyway, any, any thoughts on, on what you want to do career wise? Do you think you still want to keep working for studios or would you want to go back to freelancing? Would you want to teach? Teaching would be fun, but I feel like I, I, I'm not at that position yet or I'm, I don't know. I think you could. (laughs) That's definitely a part of the plan in the future, but I don't know when I will be, I don't know. It's, I'm thinking about it. Uh, but I think I still definitely want to want to work um, in the animation industry a little bit more because uh, I feel there's so much more things to learn and I'm really excited about that and working with other amazing artists. That's always fun. I just feel I'm super hyped about that. It's like, yeah, I want to I wanna work in the, in the industry for sure. Um, but also, like, I feel working in games and work versus working in animation um i feel in a way animation is less stable because like animation is more like a uh, you jumping between projects while working in games you could just work with them for four or five years or maybe some people work at one game studio even longer over 10 years or maybe 15 years so i think that's a big difference because we're uh, in animation right now, I feel it's it's nice to also build something of your own, maybe start some sort of your own business on the side. I think that's always a good idea to- Did you um, register your Corgi as an IP? That, that's your <laughs> business, that's your product. Right? You do have your own thing. It's a yeah. brand, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely part of my plan just to develop that a little bit more. I do feel bad. I haven't been updating much just because my body is like, no, go to bed. Don't stay in front of your desk. <laughs> you have an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You it's, have a big belly. That's a, that's a big excuse. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just treat myself. I just find all the excuses for myself just for now. But yeah, that's definitely a part of the plan. I want to develop more stories around that and maybe some products as well. I haven't thought it through yet, but I think it'll be fun to have something of my own. I was watching Nathan's, Nathan Fox. He had a talk, like bully proof uh, freelance freelance career I saw the title but I didn't I know yeah oh my god Nathan is so good at telling stories it's a really good talk he also mentioned a lot of his experience and what he has been through and it's very inspiring but also working in animation you know it's not a traditional job it's not a job where you stay in one company for the rest of your life if you want to be sustainable and then keep going it definitely needs to put a lot of efforts in there because if you don't improve you're gonna get like leave behind because i feel you need to get better you need to get more experience and you, that's the only way you can get hold of more jobs I think a lot of artists after working in the studio for a while they start like freelancing yeah, you can move to like another place. You don't need to stay in LA. It's really crowded. And you yeah. can raise a family somewhere quiet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Definitely. It's nice to have the freedom to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. LA is so expensive. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing no. here? All I want is just a backyard for my dog and I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> No, everyone's working remotely. Why do we live here right now? Yeah, we don't <laughs> exactly. need to live here. <laughs> yeah, and all that smoke. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. the earthquake. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. All, all the signs are telling us maybe it's time. Yeah. Time to go somewhere else. Leave. Yeah. But it's hard because all my friends are here. I don't yeah, want to go. But we can't see each other. I saw Michelle yesterday, but I was wearing my mask. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. I do miss everyone a lot. You know, like I think talking about the hard things, um, working from home, I guess before you could still hang out with your friends on the weekends, even I was working from home, but right now it's like, no, wear a mask. Like I think a couple of weeks ago was the first time we actually did a, like a picnic with our friends, uh, another couple. We're in uh, um, Griffiths Park, that that area, and we're just each sitting on our own uh, picnic blanket. We weren't even eating anything. We just <laughs> sit there and chit chat, like staying super far away. And I think, okay, like, I was like, okay, guys, like let's, let's take a selfie together. We did this and. We are all wearing masks, but we're all smiling, you know. It's so <laughs> see. <laughs> all right. So I have one last question for you. Yes. What do you think would be the first thing you will say to your newborn? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That mm, you behave. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> be quiet. Mama's trying to sleep. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> don't pinch the dog. <laughs> Yeah, all was, valid, all valid. It, it's it's so funny because, yeah, I just had the, the picture in my mind. The baby and the corgi will be best friends and they will be snuggled to get together and being all nice and sweet. But I think the reality is going to slap me right on my face. I think there are probably fights. I don't know. It will be funny if you start painting those images like right now and then you compare it to the reality oh later. God. It's like, this is my expectation. This is what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll check in with you later. Real life. <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. That was really fun. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys so much for inviting me. I loved all the other questions. Yeah, it's wow. actually, yeah, it makes me think a lot about everything that's going on, all the changes and stuff. So, yeah. Thank you. I feel like we should do this again probably like in a year and see how you feel. Yeah, we need to check in and <laughs> compare. Do, like after a half year, you check back in. It'll be like, like dark circles. <laughs> my hair is all crazy. Uh, when you ask me anything, I'm like, what? I got to feed the baby. Bye, guys. Like, sure, whatever. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be a happier version. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you you so much for inviting me. Thanks for listening. We love hearing from you. Feel free to write us a review on Apple Podcasts or other platforms. Leave us a comment on YouTube or just message us on Instagram. If you want to support us, please consider donating on Gumroad. You'll find a link in the description. All right. See you again soon.